Hi, camera people. Gina, what are we having for breakfast today? Uh, granola. Yeah, made, so made with me. Yum. How did you like the eggs yesterday? They were surprisingly very moist. There's a lot of butter in them, so let's get out the granola, okay? Where is it? Oh, it's. In. So on the left side here, this. we have some raw cream, what and then here we have the granola. Is this the cream? No, the cream is in this right over here. This one. Ooh. So for those of you guys that don't know, uh, we had a bunch of cute names for this tail mix, carnola, uh, carnivore granola. But it's essentially dried beef with coconut, macadamia nuts, and blueberries. I'm sure this is still good. Yeah, we just bought it, Gina. And, and this is available on frankiesfreerangemeat.com. Gina, what do you think of the, the granola in general? It's delicious and crunchy. Is it good or is it better than cereal? It's better than cereal, that's for sure. And for all you YouTubers, it. Yeah. Hey, Gina, so don't put a lot of that cream in because it's cream, it's not milk. So you could eat this like a granola. I actually ah. ate the whole bag on its own. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I like doing uh, for my sister Whoops. is it's super approachable, like cereal. Uh, like that's way too much. So we're just going to put a little bit of cream on it. So we'll just put a little bit of light cream with it. That's probably a four or 500 calorie breakfast. Mmm. Creamy. Ooh. A little bit tangy. Mmm. It's really crunchy, right? Mm hmm. Believe it or not, guys, this is 95% meat. And then you have the coconut, the blueberries, and all the other stuff. Mmm. I'm not usually here when she's eating breakfast, so I'm assuming she normally sits down to eat breakfast. Mm hmm. Or not. When she has the eggs, it's complete nutrition. Uh, this is pretty nutrient dense as well, especially with the raw cream, uh, but it's definitely more approachable. I usually make five or six days worth of eggs ahead of time, and it's always eggs from a local farm, soy free, preferably, and local raw butter. Sometimes I do add bacon, sometimes I do add raw cheese. Uh, this is beef bacon better omega-3 to omega-6 ratio and the cheese is completely raw so overall nutrient density in this meal incredibly high eggs have pretty much every nutrient your body needs you know we have the cheese for vitamin k2 and overall nutrients and we have the raw butter of course more nutrients more fat soluble vitamins the bacon just helps add you know a complete amino acid profile with the protein uh, so i'm gonna crack these eggs, mix them with some salt, we'll dice up the bacon, we'll get that going in a pan, and the butter I will usually add first if I'm not cooking with bacon. If I'm cooking with bacon, I'll actually melt the butter in at the end with the cheese. So I'll get this all prepped and I'll show you guys how I cook it. Bacon is nice and crispy, really rendered down. I have my cheese all shredded. I have my butter chopped up. Really, really soft. It smells amazing. You gotta love the summer pasture. If you notice, I left two eggs here. What we're actually gonna do later, after the eggs are cooked, we're gonna mix in two raw eggs for texture as well as to cool the eggs down. I'm just gonna whisk these up. I'm not really trying to mix them. I'm just breaking the yolks. I don't want to incorporate too much air. Okay, pan's nice and hot. Get our eggs in. And yeah, if you're really patient, you can kind of sit here on a really low heat and just make some really nice soft scrambled eggs. I'm gonna actually put in all the butter and all the cheese because this pan is really hot and I wanna cool it down. And it's much easier to emulsify things together with butter when it's added cold. So now, put the cheese in. So eggs are coming together. I'm gonna to take the other two eggs that are left. I'm gonna crack these into the bowl we had. And as you can imagine, these eggs are very calorie dense. We added two sticks of butter and like a quarter pound of cheese. 
Very high in nutrients, very satiating, very delicious. Okay, so here I have the bowl that we mixed the eggs in earlier. I'm gonna put the scrambled eggs back in the bowl with those two raw eggs. And I'm just gonna mix this together. I haven't had eggs in a long time. I'm pretty allergic, but these smell so good, I have to try them. Yeah, this is, this is really crazy. There, there's so much butter in here, it's delicious. The butter is really rich, of course, adds a lot of flavor. Slight smokiness from the bacon. The cheese adds a nice complex note. This is by far one of the tastiest things you can have for breakfast. Now, before I portion this, I like adding a couple of things. Vitamin D3 and iodine. Sometimes I do add vitamin K2, but there's plenty of vitamin K2 in the raw cheese and the eggs, so we don't really have to add that today. And I usually just give her, you know, about a week's worth of vitamin D3 in this, which is going to be, you know, 7,000 IU per day. So I shoot for about 49,000 IU in the whole batch. And iodine is usually about two drops per day. And this doesn't change the flavor at all. Don't worry about that. And now, just in these eggs in the morning, she gets pretty much all the nutrition she needs for the day. With all that butter and cheese, this actually ended up being eight days worth of eggs. Uh, Gina, did you already get your lunch ready for today? Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to show them what you're bringing for lunch? Mm -hmm. So this is just uh, some beef bologna from a local farm. And I'll show you guys how I put that together. Uh, but Gina, how do you usually like the bologna? It is. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Okay, so she's gonna go to program and she'll be home a little later in the day, and then uh, and then she's gonna have her snack and then dinner. Mm -hmm. Lunch is really simple. I just get some beef bologna from a local farm, and I mean, yeah, it smells like bologna. Uh, my sister loves it. I give her about a quarter pound uh, for lunch every day, which to me sounds uh, like a ridiculous amount, but. You know, she doesn't gain weight, so it's working. Uh, before I gave her a uh, beef bologna, uh, I was giving her like grilled chicken and stuff. Uh, but this just ended up being a whole lot easier. You know, if you can't get beef bologna from a local farm, uh, I would try to get maybe some like high quality raw cheese and, you know, some decent deli meats that you might have at your local supermarket. If you really don't have that, then deli meats in general will work. Uh, I would definitely stay away from like pork or chicken or any of the high omega-6 meats. You know, we're putting a lot of effort into food quality here. Uh, we don't really want to uh, go too high on the omega-6. Like smoked fish would be great, Sa like wild salmon. I really like this. It's approachable, it's easy, you know, none of the other kids at this school are going to question what she's having for lunch. And I don't have to do much work. The first thing my sister does when she gets home from her day program is run to the fridge to grab her snack. Gina, what's the first thing you do when you get home? I run to the fridge and eat my brother's delicious snacks. Before doing anything, you're literally fully dressed up in your coat and jacket with your backpack and you're running and grabbing your snack, right? Mm-hmm. We usually have the raw cheese, but we have the pate once in a while. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the sausage, sometimes cream with the granola. Well, that was for breakfast. Sometimes we do the cream with the chocolate, right? I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. We do cream with cacao nibs as a snack. What's your favorite out of all of them? I like all of them. How do you like the cheese with the pate? The I'll probably be extremely jazzy later, but... <laughs> do you think that the average person will like this too? Definitely. It's very good. Very healthy. Have your friends ever asked you what you're eating? Mm-hmm. They say, I don't know how you eat it. It looks interesting. I'm like, it's very good. Most of the time, it's just raw cheese. Maybe about a quarter of the time, I add some liver pate. And rarely, she has some more charcuterie, like summer sausage or prosciutto as a snack. This pate that I make for her is actually completely raw. So normally, as I said, it would just be the raw cheese. Uh, today, we have the sheep milk manchego that I showed you guys earlier. Uh, this is what we put in her eggs. 
as long as the only ingredients are raw sheep milk, rennet, salt, enzymes, you're good to go. You really just want to see the raw sheep milk on there and preferably animal rennet. I've used Parmigiano Reggiano in the past. I've used Raclette. So I'll just cut this up, maybe like 75, 100 gram portion of cheese, and she'll have that as a snack. There's quite a bit of variance in regards to what you can do here. From the choice of liver that you use, to the types of fat, whether or not you want to add a sweetener. I'm using some pork liver today. I have egg yolks, butter, as well as some raw cream from a local farm. You could use one of these, you could use two of these, you could use all of them. I find it turns out really good with just cream or just butter, uh, but combining all of them creates more depth of flavor and a nice emulsion. And the honey helps balance the bitterness or any astringent flavors of the liver and makes it much more approachable and palatable to the average person. Again, super high quality ingredients, you know, pork liver from a local farm, uh, pastured egg yolks from a local farm, raw butter, raw cream, everything super high in nutrients and just adding the liver is really, you know, making it super high in vitamin A and really can't get something that's healthier than this. It's pretty much liver ice cream. All I really do here is combine all the ingredients in the blender and mix it up. So we have the liver, we have the egg yolks, put some raw cream in, and then the butter. The more butter and cream you add, the more you'll cut the flavor of the liver, which is kind of what we want to do here. And since this is maybe two to three weeks worth of pate, you know, she's not going to eat this in a couple of days. It's going to take her a couple of weeks to eat this. We're going to add about three tablespoons of honey. Uh, this is both a preservative and, as we said earlier, to balance the flavors, make it more palatable. And we want to make sure to add plenty of salt because, you know, it'll help it stay in the fridge. Uh, but before we strain this, I want to taste it for seasoning. It's a little bit bitter and really salty. I think I put too much salt and not enough cream, so I'm going to add some more cream. We're going to add some more honey to cut through that bitterness. Wow, world of a difference. If your pate doesn't taste right, it's always a matter of balancing the ingredients. Usually adding more cream, adding more dairy, adding more honey is gonna solve the problem. Now we wanna pass this through a sieve into a bowl just to make it a nice smooth pate. There we have it, nice smooth liver pate. So this is how it looks like. Some nice slices of cheese, some pate here. Super easy, super approachable, great snack to give to your kids or anyone who doesn't want to be looked at as a weirdo. It's time for dinner. And Gina, what do we usually have? I normally have either a hot dog or a pulled pork. Today I have a... Combination of both. Combination of both. Sometimes she has sausage as well, but the main purpose of dinner is to have you know a high quality protein source either from a local farm or from frankie's free range meat uh, so gina what do you like more in that the pork or the hot dog mm, i like both she likes both okay and this was with the butter the maple syrup the salt and she really does enjoy every meal mm. uh, this is just overall nutrient content you know there's plenty of, <laughs> of butter and fat in there you know the high quality meat uh, overall Great omega-3 to omega-6 ratio, mm -hmm. very low inflammatory. And how does it taste, Gina? Mm, good. What's the favorite thing you ate today? We had the granola and cereal for breakfast. We had the bologna for lunch. You had the cheese and the pate for a snack. It was all pretty good. It's all good? You liked all of it? Yep. Okay. And then this is all you usually have for the day, right? Yep, pretty much it. Gina, do you want to say anything to YouTube about your meat diet, day of eating? Uh, my meat diet is very delicious and healthy. For dinner, I usually give Gina either hot dogs or sausage or some type of sauteed meat. Uh, here I have some pork and of course I saute it in pretty high quality butter. Hot dogs, meat, everything I usually try to get from a local farm. Uh, this butter I have is actually from Whole Foods. Uh, I didn't get to order from the farm this week. But all I'm really going to do is I'm going to saute this in the pan with the butter and then I'll drizzle some maple syrup on top to make it nice and complex and flavorful. I poached the ham and the hot dogs in some butter on a pretty low heat just to kind of warm them through. Added a bit of salt and now what I'm going to do is 
take some maple syrup and just drizzle this on top. Maybe like three tablespoons total. And keep in mind, this is spread over the course of, you know, about a week and a half. So, you know, seven, eight meals worth for three tablespoons of maple syrup isn't actually a lot of sugar. If you guys haven't tried pork and maple syrup, you're really missing out. I've never actually mixed the hot dogs with the ham, uh, but I'm sure she'll like it anyway. Usually just one or the other. Here we have eight 200 gram meals. And for her size at four foot 11, 100 pounds, this is a lot of food. Uh, breakfast was 125 grams and lunch was 110 grams. So she's eating, you know, at least a pound of meat every single day, plus about half a pound of fat. After all of that prep, I have about a week's worth of meals for my sister. Uh, believe it or not, I've been doing this for two years straight. All she has to do is take out a container, warm it up if she wants to, preferably not in the microwave, and then chow down. Gina, where should people get their meat? It makes a difference in, in the quality and the flavor, right? Yeah, it sure does, Frank. So uh, you should definitely buy all your meat products from my brother's meat company, Frank's Natural. Gina, Frankie's Free Range Frankie's Meat. Frankie's Free Range that's a Frank is free range meat. I'll give her the benefit of the doubt as both my meat company and hygiene company have the word Frankie in the title. So if you want high quality, nutrient dense animal foods at the most affordable price online, go to frankiesfreerangemeat.com. We've recently added 100% grass fed and grass finished Wagyu beef as well as prime grade marbled steaks. And on Frankie's Naturals, I recently added a tooth powder remineralizing formula. So go to frankiesfreerangemeat.com or frankiesnaturals.com. Everything will be down in the comments below. If you guys are interested in one-on-one -on -one consultations pertaining to health, you can shoot me an email, frankatefano at gmail.com. Thanks for joining me, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day.